Hey guys, welcome to this series on automating REST APIs using REST Assured. So the agenda of this video is onto your screen. Um, the prerequisites list uh, looks quite daunting, but don't you worry. If you have been associated with this channel, you already know the focus is always on building the concepts, which could then serve you across different tools and platforms. So that means stay relaxed, connected and find time to practice the concepts being talked about in this series. The more you practice, the better you get and there are no shortcuts in learning. So having said that, knowing basics of APIs, Postman, Kojava, TestNG and Maven will surely give you the added advantage and you can have sharper focus on learning rest assured library. So depending upon when you are watching this video, you may find a dedicated playlist on each of these mentioned topics. So feel free to go and check out the playlist. Then we will briefly touch base on the concepts like client server architecture, REST API and REST Assured. Post that we will install the required tools like Java JDK, Eclipse ID and Eclipse TestNG plugin. And at last, to practice REST API automation testing, we need sample API endpoints or even better would be a sample REST API project. There are many public APIs available on the internet which you can refer to in your testing but they all have certain limitations in terms of what and what not you can validate. For example, how could you confirm whether a resource is actually created by your POST request or not? and many more. Now to solve this very problem, I have created this diverse API which offers most of it from a single origin. Then guys, this slide talks about the prerequisites and resources from where you can learn more about each topic. So number one, basic of REST APIs would simplify REST assured learning. Number two, we would use Postman as a request response reference for REST Assured artifacts. Number three, REST Assured only works with Java, so it is obvious we need to be comfortable with it. Number four, TestNG. A TestNG is a testing framework designed to simplify a broad range of testing needs from unit testing to integration testing and we also use that for doing the UI automation testing using Selenium. Now we're going to use the same test ng for also doing the API testing. Now why? Because it supports annotations which helps to group test cases, set priorities, dependencies, supply data to tests, retries of failed test cases, parallel execution, test reporting, etc. Now, last one is Maven, which is basically a build automation tool used primarily for Java projects. Now, it addresses two aspects of building software. Number one, how a software is built. And number two, its dependencies. Now, for first three resources at the time of recording, I already have playlist onto my channel. For the remaining two, I'll cover the needed concept in this series itself. And depending upon when you are watching this series, you may also find detailed dedicated playlist on TestNG and Maven 2. So feel free to go and check out the playlist. So this is how you are going to reach to my channel and then you have to click on the playlist and in here you already have learn API testing using Postman. You have important API testing concept, API testing 101 and then core Java basics. So then comes the client server architecture. So what is a client server architecture guys? The client initiates a transaction by sending a request to the server and server which is always in the state of readiness to accept requests respond by providing a service or resource to the client. This is core principle of client server model. Now let's break it down into individual components. Now there is a client looking for a resource available with the machine, which is also called a server, which exists somewhere on the internet. Now, resource could be anything, guys, like data, image, audio, video, document, some kind of service, etc. So, for a client to be able to fetch the resource from that server, they first need to connect and understand each other. 
Now this requirement is being fulfilled by HTTP protocol, which means it won't be wrong to call them as HTTP client and HTTP server respectively. Now I'm sure you know that there is also this HTTPS, which is nothing but secured HTTP protocol. Now client also needs to know the IP address and port number of the server to connect and send request for a specific resource. Since IP addresses are hard to remember and we work with domains like google.com, now that domain internally defines the IP address of the server and each protocol has a default port. For example, HTTP runs on port 80 and HTTPS port runs on 443. Now the API that I developed for this series would run locally on port 5002. Then comes guys path and query parameter. Now path parameter defines the path of the resource onto that machine and query parameters filters out the resource if we have multiple resources at that path. Let me give you an example. Alright, so this is one of the website that I have hosted on Netlify domain. It contains some topics related to JavaScript. Okay, so I'm going to click on this arrays. And then you see one diagram. Okay. Now, since I have deployed this, I know that there is a folder called as resource inside which I have placed this file. Okay. So if I have to access this resource, mm -hmm. right? So what I'm going to do is, you, as you could see, this is my domain. Okay. Then I'm providing the path. Okay. So this is the folder. Uh, underneath that, this is the name of the file. So if I do so, I can directly access this file. Okay. So it is important to understand all the different parts of the URL. Okay, so broadly you can say you have this protocol which is either HTTP or HTTPS then you may have a subdomain okay and then you have got the domain you have got the port you have got the path okay and then this is how you provide in the query parameters okay. All right, so this information would be helpful when we start constructing our request in REST Assured. All right, so then comes is REST API. There's a short definition of it mentioned on this slide. So REST is short for Representational State Transfer, which is nothing but an architecture style for building web services that interact via an HTTP protocol. A REST client can interact with each resource by sending an HTTP request. REST isn't linked to any particular technology or platform, nor does it dictate exactly how to build an API. Instead, it introduces best practices known as constraints. They describe how the server processes requests and respond to them. Operating within these constraints, the system gains desired properties. These principles are client servers autonomy, uniform interface, layered architecture, caching, stateless interaction and code on demand. Now as a software tester, you don't need to worry much about these principles, but I recommend you do some quick reading on these. Then comes guys, REST Assured. Now REST Assured is a Java library for simplifying testing of RESTful web services. Basically testing and validating REST services in Java is harder than in dynamic languages such as Ruby and Groovy. So REST Assured simply brings the simplicity of using these languages into the Java domain. Now it can be used to test XML and JSON based web services. It supports all these different methods like get, post, put, patch, delete, options and head request and can be used to validate and verify the response of these requests. It can easily set up an HTTP connection, send a request, receive and pass a response. Now REST Assured makes your API testing more powerful with its ability to create data driven tests. Now, some key benefits of using REST Assured are number one, it removes the need to write a lot of code which is required to set up an HTTP connection, send a request, receive a response and pass in validate. Number two, it supports BDD style which is nothing but given when then test notation 
which makes the test more readable. Number three, being a Java library, you can easily integrate this into a continuous integration, continuous delivery setup, especially when combined with a Java testing framework such as JUnit or TestNG. Now guys, time to start setting up the environment required to write REST API automation code. We need Java JDK, which basically provides the development and runtime environment. In this series, I'll specifically work on version 10 and I'm working on Windows operating system. Then comes guys, Eclipse, which will be using as an IDE. And at last we require Eclipse test ng plugin to allow you to run your test ng test from Eclipse and easily monitor their execution and their output. So let me show you all these links. I'll also paste these links down below in the description of this video. So guys, this is your Java link. So you can choose to download any version, but I'm using, like I said, version 10. So it would be nice if you can have 10 so that at least we do not have version specific conflicts. Okay. Then you can download the Eclipse version from this link. Okay. Just click on it and it is going to download that. Now, once this is downloaded, you will have, in my case, I have eclipse.exe. I just double click on it. It is going to launch Eclipse for me. And the last one is TestNG plugin. So you can download this plugin using these ways. There are two ways being mentioned in here. I have already done it so I can show you. Once you have it, then in the install, right, you will find this. Okay. So I've done this using Eclipse Marketplace. So you have to go to search and in here you have to say Eclipse and then click on the install button. Okay. So guys, after installing Java, you also have to do one more step. You have to set the Java path into your system. And if you are stuck anywhere, okay, just feel free to drop a comment down below and respond as soon as I can. Okay. And finally, guys, we have to set up our own REST API server please open this github link download the zip file and follow the instructions mentioned under installation steps so let me show you that as well so guys this is the project that i have created and shared on github repo so i have used javascript and express.js which means that you know to make it work you have to do few settings again but first download this project okay unzip uh, the project files okay go to the installation steps and in here since this is a javascript code so you need to have a javascript environment in place for that you have to install node.js then guys you need an id which is visual studio code then for this project you have to install the nodemon globally onto your system so open the terminal and just execute this command now download the project part is already done now you have to open that project in the visual studio code in the integrated terminal so i'll show you for example this is my project i say let me start it from again so once your project is done okay so then the next step that you have to do is you have to say npm install so this will install all the dependencies that are required by this project once this is done you just have to say npm start Okay, when you do this command at the end, you will see the server started on port number 5002. Great. So you have a working API ready. And now I decided to save everything into the JSON file just to save some of your time in setting up the database. Okay. Now, next thing that we have to do is we have to check whether this API is working or not. And for that, what I have done is I have this postman api collection exported to this project okay since you have already downloaded this project just grab this file open your postman click on file then click on import and then upload that collection file okay once you do that you will have the collection listed something like this now next you have to do is click on the single member okay and currently uh, i'm trying to find the member which has got the id 3 
so let me see whether it makes sense or not so we have this in here okay which means that it is working so for example if i say nine okay i hit enter i get this okay so this is some kind of validation that are running so you usually don't find that on the public api and then i've also used the basic authentication the password of that is admin admin so please go and read the documentation so i'm super excited to make more videos on this i hope you too are so if so please feel free to join me in the next video thanks for watching